Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Last week we concluded with the personality of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is a person. We established that. Amen? Ever said the Holy Ghost is a person. But that, lead, that, that, that bids the question, what kind of person is he? Is he God? Is he divine? Is he infinite? You know, and so we're going to talk about that this morning, the deity of the Holy Spirit. So we have established in the past few services, he is not a force, he's not an influence, he's not some kind of just power looming out there, he is a person. But we need to take it to the next level, because if he is a person, and he is divine, then he is worthy of worship, adoration, praise, and, and, accept, and, 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 um, and, and relationship the same way we do with the, fa the Father and the Son, all right? Five distinct lines of proof are given in the Old Testament and New Testament that the Holy Spirit <coughs> is divine or deity. Four attributes, listen to this, four attributes ascribed to uh, God are ascribed to the Holy Spirit. Now, now I, we, we made these arguments because some people come on and say the Holy Spirit is a force, he's an it, it's not, he's not a real person, he's just, you know, some kind of power that comes out of God. No, he's a person. Let's talk about the four attributes of God, God that are ascribed to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the first one is eternity. We know that God is eternal. He is eternal. He, he, he has no beginning, no end. He, he exists. Remember he told Moses, um, Moses said, when he, you send me to Pharaoh, who am I supposed to say that sent me? And God said, you tell them that I am, that I am sent you. Now, that's King James. Actually, that, word, that phrase in the Hebrew comes out in English a little bit better this way. I exist because I exist. I just exist. Amen? You know, we, we, we understand finiteness in us. We know a day of birth. We know the day when people die. Amen? We know that they, were, they did not exist before their birth. They, you know, your spirit didn't even exist before your birth. Hallelujah. You know, but God's eternal. He has no beginning. He has no end. He exists forever. Hallelujah. And so, so you know, and one of the kind of interesting things about that statement, they told Pharaoh, to tell Pharaoh, I am that I am, the Pharaohs tried to present an eternity in their, in their line as pharaohs. So they would dress alike and they'd be the same like and uh, to deceive the people into believing that Pharaoh was a God who always existed. <laughs> but Moses showed up, glory to God, and said, the one that really is, the one that exists because he exists sent me. You think you are, you pretend that you are, but the real one sent me. Amen. Hallelujah. That's something to get excited about. Amen. And he said, and so and that and then all the gods, all the plagues dealt with a God of Egypt. They had the river god. They had the frog god. They had the, all these different gods, the fire god. They had all these different gods, and God took them all on head up and won. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you all excited about that? I hope all, if you all went and saw Exodus, don't believe a word of it because it wasn't done biblically. It was just done Hollywood. The guy was an agnostic who did it. The actors were atheists. They didn't care. They made, actually, some made, uh, Christian Bell kind of made fun of God in his acting about the movie, uh, talking about the movie. And so it was not, it was not even close to being biblical. Now, Ten Commandments, Moses, you know, Cecil B. DeMille, uh, with Charlton Heston in it, was much more biblical. Some of the storyline was, was fabricated, but the, the events were, they did a lot of research, a lot of Jewish research, a lot of historical research, stuff to prove out that, you know, to do things in a biblical and historically accurate manner according to the Bible, okay? So if you want to see a good one, go watch that one. Right. Splitting the Red Sea is still one of the most phenomenal uh, cinematic events ever done because of, oh, because of the way they had to do it, and it's still amazing. It still looks good. It's still cool. I just watched it recently. It's still cool. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. But see here, Hebrews 9, 14, it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the what? Eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. What we're after here is the Holy Spirit is referred to eternal. He's referred to with the same attribute that the Father is, eternal. Amen? Secondly, he's omnipresent. Now, the word omni, or the, the, the prefix omni, means all, or encompassing everything. So, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He means he's everywhere. Amen? Now, look here. It's a scripture that talks about Psalm 139, verse 7 through 10. We all know God's everywhere. God exists everywhere. Amen? Whether I go, where, where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? This is Psalm 139, verses 7 through 10. If I ascend up into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of this morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Notice he says here, where shall I go from thy spirit? 
The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere. That's an attribute that God has. The God that we, we refer to, the God of heaven, the God of the earth, the God of creation, the God of all things is everywhere. And the Holy, he says here, his spirit is everywhere. Thank God the Holy Spirit. See, this is an attribute ascribed to God that the Bible ascribes to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. The next one, turn back around here, um, omniscient. Now, that, this, and don't you just love that word? Omniscient, or you know, he has, a, uh, you know, uh, omniscience. You know, it's really it's omniscience, which it simply means this: it's all knowing. Right. He knows everything. Now, everybody thinks that Santa Claus knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake, and he knows when you've been good, and when you've been bad. For goodness' sake, you know, whatever. And those are all cute, but they're not real. Right. God is all knowing. Right. Jesus said he even knows how many hairs you got on your head. And how many you lost? It's a count. Amen? What's that? It's a running count. A running count. Yeah, because it changes. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's omniscient. You know, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm, I'm just excited about this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's all-knowing. 1 Corinthians 2.10 says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit knows everything that God knows. Why? Because he search, he's God. He searches even he, God the Father. There's nothing hidden from the Father that, that the Holy Spirit doesn't know. He's all-knowing. I said he's all-knowing. Yeah, he knows what you did last week. But you know, that the good thing is, he also knows where to lead you to get you to get right with God. We can come to the throne of grace in the time of need. Amen? Hallelujah. But they say he's still all know. He knows everything. Praise God. Next, uh, another verse, John 14, 26, the, but the comforter. We've, we've told you a number of times that word comforter is parakolitos in the Greek. And it encompasses more than just comfort, teacher, advocate, strengthener, standby, helper. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He knows everything. He can teach you everything that the Son knows. Everything the Son said, everything that the... Remember this in First John, uh, First John, John 1.1. 1, 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That is, the word there for word is logos. And logos is different from rhema. There's two words we use in the New Testament for word, and it's logos and rhema. Rhema tends to convey the idea of, of something spoken or pulled out or a revelation of a, of a part of the word. Logos encompasses the whole. Jesus is the whole word. He's the whole discourse. He's everything. Amen? All the discourse of God is Jesus. He's the word. Well, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will take everything that Jesus taught. And on all, he knows all, if he knows all the word, he knows all, everything. And he'll bring it to your remembrance. Amen. He's all knowing. Glory to God. John 16, 12. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot hear them now. How be it? When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into how much truth? Oh, oh all truth. Thank God. He brings us in. The, he's not bringing in the half truths. Now, sometimes in the church, we cut him off and stop where we like a part that we really like. But I'm telling you, you got to take the whole thing. He wants to bring all truth to you, not just a part, the whole thing. Amen. He'll bring, lead you in all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things that come. And the, hallelujah. Brother Benny was asking me recently, he said, have you ever heard, read Oral Roberts' teaching uh, um, over in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, where Brother Roberts talks about interpreting your own prayers in the Spirit? And I said, no, I haven't read the Bible, but I, but I heard him teach it a number of years ago. Uh, the way Brother Roberts was led on and on and on and on again in, in how he did his ministry was he would pray out in the Spirit and then interpret his own prayers by the Holy Ghost and get direction from heaven. Amen? See, all the Holy Spirit knows everything, and he'll show you things to come. I said, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Amen? Amen? I heard Dad Hagen, he said, you know, he never had a problem uh, with recession or anything. He, I mean, back in, back in the 70s when we went into that deep recession, y'all remember that, don't you? Well, some of you were. Well, uh, I, was, I was a graduate from high school in 76. I started driving in 74, whatever. You know, got, got my license, 74, got my license. Now, I remember 
Some of you older people remember. The flags flying when they had gas. And you remember your license tag determined whether you could buy gas today or not. If you had an even number you could buy it today, you had to do the odd number tomorrow. And then they would, at that time, they only give you $3 or $2 worth at a time. Now, gas had gone from 20 to 25 cents a gallon, and it spiked at 49 cents a gallon. But when you're making 70 cents an hour, that's big. Hello? When you bring, when you bring home pay is 60 or $70 a week, that's big. Amen? Hallelujah. And, uh, but, but that hangs to that. The Lord spoke to him and said, there's a coming recession. And he we had to go and lay off people from the ministry ahead of time. But he knew, he, and they didn't get hit and ahead of time. They knew it was coming. See, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. He'll show you in advance. And if you listen to him, you'll avoid, you'll avoid trouble. Now, sometimes we don't do it and we get in trouble. And he, he he's, he's mercifully helps us out of it. But I, it's better not to get in trouble in the first place. Amen. I'd rather not even get in trouble than have to get out of trouble. Amen. Amen. Now, a few years ago, Nathan was, uh, when his senior high school, they had this, they always do it at Wesleyan, during alum, uh, not alumni week, but a homecoming, they, they, they have a big um, parade out there for the kids. You know, it's a K through 12 school, so the high schoolers will, each grade does a theme, and they run through the parking lot, and run through, and all the, the little guys stand outside, and they throw candy at them, and, all and, it's, and it's a five-minute parade, because it don't take long to drive through the parking lot, <laughs> all right? But Nathan was on his way to school. Dressed up with tights on and a SpongeBob square thing on. He was SpongeBob. Because he could go, he could, see, he could still do it. Anyway, and he was going to cut through one of the neighborhoods in Jamestown because it was, he knew the elevator was back, kind of backed up and longer. And, but see, he never, did, he never did it. And he went down one of the roads that, in, back in that part of uh, Forestdale are a bunch of four way stop signs. Well, he came down the road, went right, because there was a, there was a, um, Weeping Willow hanging out in front of the stop sign as he approached it. He never saw it. He went, oh, man, that was a stop sign. Man, I sure hope nobody saw it. And then we looked up in his mirror, there's blue lights already. The guy was sitting back up that little stub road there waiting for somebody to run through that stop sign. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it had been better if he had never gotten the ticket. Now, it cost me $200, $238 or whatever, plus the $50 fee because the lawyers get you out of it. They get it turned into improper equipment. They send you... It sends you letters and instantly. Start getting generated letters, you know. Call us. We'll get rid of your ticket. It costs you 50. You'll still have to pay for the price of the ticket, but you won't get the points on your license because it will be improper equipment. That was the improper tree. Yeah. Tree hanging in front of the sign. Now, here's the thing. It was more trouble to get out of it if he had never got, it, got into it. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Amen? I, I know this, that the Spirit of God will speak to you. I, I gotta, it's, it's too hot in here today. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you in advance to keep you out of trouble or prepare you for things to come or to establish you in things you need to go to do. Amen. Amen. I remember when I first got saved back in 1979. Hallelujah. On a Wednesday night at the First Pentecostal Holiness Church at the corner of Brinkley Road and Plaza, Plaza Drive. I got that from Brother Hagen. Well, I was born again. Hallelujah. At the Baptist altar, the first they had, their, their church, our pastor used to say, it was built like a Baptist church and not a Pentecostal church. It, it, it did look like a, it looked like, the, actually, if you've ever seen the, the Beck's wedding pictures, you see ours, they look similar to two different churches. The colors of the altars and everything are all the same. So, and uh, they got married in the, in the Friendly Avenue Baptist Church or the, whatever it is out there, Guilford Baptist, whatever it is. Two different cities. So anyway, I got to say that the Baptist altar, the first Pentecostal holding in the church, corner of Brinkley Road and Plaza Drive. Hallelujah. Linwood Moore was preaching. That was that, or yeah, Linwood Moore, was preaching, and uh, I don't know what he preached. I just got saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Holy Spirit came in, and and and, and then I got the week, the four days later, I went and got filled with the Holy Ghost. Back church got filled with the Holy Ghost. This is July. Sometime in August of that year, I was just we were at the altar. You know, in Pentecostals we always go to the altar on Sunday night and Wednesday nights. We just go down in front of church. We all pray. And the old saints come and lay hands on you. You know, they just pull the power of God down on you. And they pray heaven all over you. And if you're not saved, you're doing everything you can get out of there. They got you. They got you in the death Pentecostal grip. They got you. You're not getting anywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, oh, God, use this man, this young man, for your glory. Get him saved for us, then use him for your glory. Hallelujah. And, uh, but I remember 
in a time of prayer during that August, just, just hallelujah, excited. the Spirit of God on the inside didn't speak as far as, you know, um, you will. But I impressed in my spirit. Remember the still, small voice? What's this got to do with the deed of the Holy Spirit? Well, he knows everything. And he'll show you things to come. And strong on the inside of me was me going to the Orient and preaching. Strong. Man, it was so strong I thought I was supposed to pack my bags tomorrow and go get an airline ticket. And that's how strong it was. Well, you know, over time it didn't happen. It didn't happen and it didn't happen. Some of those things sometimes you begin to put, in, put kind of on the back shelf because it didn't happen in a certain period of time. We're gone. I've gone to Ramah. Jamie and I are married. We're having kids. We've come to Greensboro and started pastoring. And um, Dad Hagen used to talk about a guy named Mark Brzee and Doug Jones. He used to talk about it together because they traveled with him on his crusade teams. And um, got a phone call from another pastor. He said, look, I got Mark Brzee coming here. And uh, he, I mean, he doesn't want to do Sunday morning and Sunday night for me, but he wants to preach somewhere else while he's in the area. Would you have? I said, sure. I'll take a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights. <laughs> Didn't even think about it. Just said it. Just, yes, sir. Right on. Let's go. I've heard of him. Dad Hagen's talking about it's good enough for Dad. It's good enough for me. You know? And uh, so Mark came and preached for three nights. And we, he, he just told me, he said, uh, this is why I was supposed to be here. I was supposed to be in your church. So praise God. So he came like five times over the next few years. And uh, near one of the latter times he came, we, he, he said, look, actually, back to, we went to camp meeting one year, uh, oh, 90, 89, 90, 91, 91, 91 camp meeting. We were out in Tulsa. And um, uh, Brother Hagen was down there ministering and, and people and stuff went out. And I came in up top of the Tulsa Assembly Center. That's when they used to have an assembly center. And I came in the top right rail and was walking around, and Mark was standing there talking to somebody, and I, and I just kind of said, hey, kind of, you know, you don't want to interrupt somebody's conversation. I went, hey, and just kind of, well, he grabbed me and said, hold it. Now, the night before, I was sitting in my seat and saw them across the arena, close enough, to, you know, fourth server, but so you can, you know, you know, if you know somebody, you can know who they are, and they know you, so we kind of just waved. And when I finished waving, this is the night before now, I just kind of sat back, and I heard these words, you're traveling Europe with Mark, it's Brazil. Now, understand, it eventually became, it was really Mark Brzee Ministries, but he, he, that's how he said it to me. And, I, and I, here's what I did. See, we can't be, we got to be careful when God speaks to us. Because when he said that to me, I went, Sh yeah, that's just, I thought it was my mind making it up. See, I've learned some things over time. See, sometimes when God's teaching you and leading you, you learn. At that point in time, I went, Sh right. Mark's big, he's, he preaches at camp meeting, I mean, you know, he's well known, he's doing all these things for God, he's, he's awesome, things in East Germany, they did, got Brother Hagin's, the authority of the believer in East Germany, got those pastors saved, they started believing for the Iron Curtain to come down. Here's what they said in Germany, the Iron Curtain will fall, but there'll be no bloodshed in our country, and of all the countries that fell, Germany, East Germany was the only one where there was nobody killed because of the past communism. That's because those pastors got their authority to start praying, it'll come down, but there'll be no bloodshed in our country. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Amen. So anyway, the next time I walk in, and he's talking to somebody before service kind of gets started, and Grant grabs his hold it. And so uh, he, he, says, he finishes his conversation, turns to me and says, look, I'm starting Bible schools in Europe, and I want you to go preach in them. Because the night before, the Holy Spirit said, you'll travel in Europe. And I went right. The next night, he grabs and said, I want you to go travel to our schools. Now, I didn't have to think about it. I didn't go, let me pray about it. <laughs> now, the Holy Spirit had already shown things to come. Now, I didn't catch it when he gave it to me, but when he asked me that question, okay, yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm, right. <laughs> then he had to tell me, you know, that's last night. The Lord spoke. I just thought it was me making things up in my head, but I, yes, I'll go. Amen? Amen? Well, we go over a number of years, and, and, and one of our, the only place I've been back to more than once was Estonia. And I've been there five times. We went three times with Mark schools. And then that school closed. They, they had a period of time they did the schools and they would close them. Um, but then I'm, Ken Cassick, who's been in our church a number of times, uh, we started going and ministering his, with him. Uh, there's such a heart to go back. I've got to go back. We, we are loved in Estonia. They know who we are. All over the country. Because we come and we preach and we minister and we bring life to them. Hallelujah. And uh, my heart's just, I've got to get back. <laughs> Glory to God. It's one of the most expensive places we go. The only other place that's been more expensive was Thailand. That's because you're flying halfway around the world. And um, so anyway, I, um, we were doing this, and then about four years or five years into this thing, 
of going overseas and preaching all over Europe, Eastern Europe, some in Western Europe. Uh, I mean, been in Prague, Czech Republic. We've been in Estonia, been in Sweden, Spain, France, Germany, uh, uh, Italy, and England preaching. All with the Mark Brzee schools there. All over those places teaching in Bible schools, ministering to Bible students. And Mark sent his letter out Vision Magazine, picked it up one day, and he, he was talking, he was flying, and he was flying uh, home from somewhere in Europe, and, and the Lord said to him, what you've done in Europe, now go do in Asia. And when he said that, I, when I saw that on the page, I like to jump through the ceiling, because the Spirit of God said, see, there it is. I knew exactly how I was going to the Orient. And the next year, guess where I was? Bangkok, Thailand. Now, I went to Bangkok, Thailand in 1999. The Lord spoke to me in 1979. The Holy Ghost will show you things to come. Tell you what you're going to do. Man, I, I, I almost wanted to kiss the ground when I got off of Bangkok. Not because I was like in America. It was, this is fulfillment of the word of the Lord. 20 years later, he spoke to me. He showed me things to come. And can I share something with you? He's shown me things to come that haven't come yet. But I do know this, they're coming. I said, they're coming. Because he spoke them. Hallelujah. And, I, and we, we said from the very beginning, we're going to establish churches in other cities, states. And, well, God showed us that. We're going to establish churches other places. It's coming to pass. I said, it's coming to pass. Why? Because the Spirit of God spoke it. The word of the Lord endures forever. And the Spirit of God comes. Oh, Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. And there are things he's spoken to you. And there are things he's placed in your heart and declared to you in time past. And some of you have let them go, just as I did in the past, where you thought, oh, no, that's not ever going to happen. I just made that up. But be assured of this. That was God. That was his spirit. That was the voice of the Holy One speaking to you and declaring to you. And all this time, all this time, he's been working things. And getting things in order. And preparing things. So you could walk out his plan. Hallelujah. And I think back over the, the trip. You know I was speaking by inspiration of the spirit there. That just wasn't me saying stuff. Hallelujah. I think back. To what it took to get me to time. Now see I could have gone to Europe on my own. But when you walk with God. It don't take, it's, it's effortless. This new church. It's, it's been effortless. We've been trying to figure out what to do, all kinds of things. Trying to, hey, how can we expand the ministry? How can we do this? And God just goes, there it is, son, go. Okay. <laughs> Pretty easy to me. Now, not, not, not that you won't ever have to, to put effort into stuff, but I'm telling you, when it's God, it's, it's, it's a, how can you say this? It's an ease of effort. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. What? For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. When he directs you, when he gives you, when he shows you, it doesn't take the effort of the flesh to accomplish it. You just have to obey and do what he tells you to do in the, the process. This thing with Winston has been so easy. I'm not even have to, we don't have to advertise saying it does it all. I'm not going to invite people. She's doing it all. Her and Donna just over there going crazy. You know, I, 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 we took the, the old podium from, that we never used next door, took home. Jesse made this really cool look, and I wish we had to show you the picture of it. Logo for the front. It's kind of like the one says Greensboro, but put it on wood, and, and we, we put it on there. And I said, Donnie, I need a shelf in there. Because I was going to put one on at home. I thought, no, Donnie said he'll help. I gave it to him. He said, I can do it. Oh, praise God, I don't have to do it. Is it in there yet? But it'll be there by Thursday, won't it? Yeah, it'll be by Thursday. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when you walk with God, so this whole thing of going to Europe, but God showed me in 79, I'm going to Europe. See, the Spirit of God spoke. Amen. He'll show you things to come. Amen. There are things laying in your heart that have been, been dormant for decades in some places, or, or, or five years, or four years, or seven years, or ever how long. They've been lying where you thought were dormant and dead, but the Holy Ghost is just waiting for the day to resurrect it. Amen. For in the fullness of time, Jesus came. And there's going to be a fullness of time in each of your lives where those things that the Spirit of God spoke will be raised up and manifest in your life. Glory be to God. And I think back to getting to Europe, all the things that happened and all the relationships that took place. See, God spoke to me before I went to Ramah. I was just a good little old Pentecostal boy. 
They weren't happy that I went to Raymond. I was supposed to go to Holmes College of the Bible in Greenwood, South Carolina. That's where I was heading, but the Lord told me not to go. He stopped me, stopped me in my tracks. I was leaving the spring semester of 1979 to go down there to go to Bible school at the Pentecostal Holiness Bible School. But the Lord stopped me. He arrested me. My parents came to me right after Christmas and said, you're not going, are you? I said, no, I don't know. See, I'm young. I don't know anything about being led by the Spirit. I said, something on the inside of me just won't let me go. And, I, and not much longer after that, somebody in our church gave me a little brochure on, on Raymond. I'm not lost. I know what I'm doing. Gave me a little book on Raymond Bible Training Center. And he opened up the first page. It was kind of a square book. Open up the first page, and there's a black page with the full color logo of our Rama Bible Training Center. If you go in my office, my, 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 uh, my graduation certificate from Rama and that logo are in a special frame. Because, that, you know, that's just up on the wall of my office. I, had that, I took that, and we had it framed, uh, custom framed, because it's a circle. So we did, they did a circle for that and a square for my diploma from graduating from Rama. And uh, so he said this, he, he was a Pentecostal homeless minister who graduated from their home Bible study. And he, gave, he said, if I was going to go to Bible school anywhere, this is where I'd go. Wow. Now, I've heard of Kenneth Copeland at that time. I'd never heard of Kenneth Hagin. Except maybe Copeland mentioned him a couple of times. First time I ever heard Brother Hagin preach was when I went to Tulsa. I'd heard one five-minute excerpt of a tape one time where he went, What? I was saved on the bed of affliction. Reading Grandma's Methodist Bible. Yeah, that's, how, that's the only thing I heard. That one little five, that's all I It went to Raymond. It's the first time I ever heard him. Really ever heard him. And I looked at it, and being the man of faith uh, and power, really the patient power, I looked at it and saw how much it cost. I said, I can't do that. I didn't know anything about faith. I'm seven months old in the Lord. Man, I'm just, I just love Jesus. I'm not learning anything that I love the Lord. And then when a few months later, this, the, the, some things worked out, and all of a sudden, I knew, and the way up, and somebody's going to pay for me to go, and I just started jumping up and down, I'm going to Rhema. I'll pray. I am? Yeah, I'm going to Rhema. You are? Yeah. I was having a conversation with myself. <laughs> that was in May. I was in Rhema in June, July. I was at Tulsa in July for camp meeting. Oh, my, 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 my. I'd never seen anything like it. And I grew up Pentecostal. I saw stuff in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Brother Roberts preached. I mean, how many of you ever read his book? I was telling Benny before service. How many of you ever read Brother Roberts' book, Flood Tide Blessings? You know where that summer came from? It came from Camp Meet in 1979, 1980, 1980. 1980. It came from Camp Meet in 1980. And I got my dates mixed up. It was 1980, the spring of 80 I was going to go because I got saved in 79. He, pre he got up, Brother Hagin, looked at it about, I think, Friday or Saturday night and said, Brother Roberts, you got anything? He jumps up and runs up. I've been waiting all week for this. Took over. <laughs> just took over the service and preached. <laughs> but hey, he just went and sat down. Because he said, you got anything? Yep, he's got anything. He went and preached. And uh, preached flood tide blessings. Hallelujah. That was, that was good, too. It's a good book. You know, walking down, just, just, down, just trickled, but the flood tide, overflowing blessings of God. Hallelujah. So then I ended up Raymond. And, and then during Raymond, Brother Hagin would talk about Mark Brzee and Doug Jones and talk about the girls that were going to marry him and bought the wedding dresses and sent out invitations and they weren't even dating them because they were living by faith. See, that's stupid. That's not faith. <laughs> sent out invitations to people to get they're going to get married and somebody they ain't even dating. People say, you can't do that. I said, yeah, I'm, you're not going to hurt my faith. Both of them married somebody else. So it didn't really work, did it? And so we come, we come back home, spend five years in our church in, in Greenville, come here and start pastoring. And then I get that phone call from a guy I had met at a, at a state alumni meeting and we've gone down to his church for a couple of meetings we just kind of had, had developed a little bit of a casual relationship because we you know, hadn't spent a lot of time together and that's when he called me and said I got Mark Bazee coming you want him now think about all the things God's doing all along the way and so we met Mark Mark comes to preach us Mark starts Bible schools we start going to his Bible schools and then he hoops up Europe and we go to Europe all that taking place see God's doing stuff you don't even know there are things happening right now in your life that God is working to bring to pass what he's already spoke to you. Amen. Oh, glory to God. See, you, don't, you can't see the connections until it takes place. You'll never know it until it takes place. And then you go, dot, 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 doop, boop, 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 zoop, dot, 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 boom. Wow. <laughs> then you can connect all the dots. But you can't connect them in advance. Why? He's showing you things to come. He's already told you the outcome. You don't know how you're getting there. Amen. But I can tell you this. Stay faithful. Stay connected. Listen to the Holy Ghost. He'll get you there. 
That's where he's working right now. He's working to get you there. So don't be sad. Don't be depressed. Don't, be, don't get backed up. Don't let the devil run over you. Don't let him take your dreams away from you. Praise God. Just keep them out there and let God bring you into them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know this. I will travel more than I've ever traveled before. And still pastor. I don't believe I'm supposed to quit pastor. I'm supposed to, God's, God just doubled me up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now I'm backing off, doubling up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, brother, hey, you say about Raymond Day. What does Raymond Day mean? You just double up your offer and bring it. Say, what if I don't have everything? He said, double up and come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. God just doubled us up. That's just the beginning. Hallelujah. I'm thinking, man, I got to I get in better shape. I got to get, you know, whatever, because I got to run. I got a lot of running to do now. Amen. 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 How do they, we just, we're, we're, Sunday the 1st, I'll be preaching in Statesville. Um, one of our people asked us to come, come preach on their Sunday morning service. So I'll be going over there and preaching over there. See, wait, we, God's got us, this, this body, so ready. We're, we're all, we're cool. We got so many Raymond people. I got to do something with you. Don't want to run you off. I want to keep you here and put you somewhere, doing something. So people get to preach on Sundays. It's Wednesday, Sunday nights. People will be doing all kinds of stuff. God's good. I'll be preaching the main Monday and Sunday services unless I'm out of town. Don't, don't. Be worried about that Wednesday nights. I'll keep doing. Some of these guys will preach on some Sunday nights. Hallelujah! Why? Because I can't do it all. And we got qualified people. God's raised up the guys. Put good place people in our church to do things. But God has something for you that He spoke to you. He placed in your heart. It's there. And sometimes we let those things kind of get away from us. Or if we revisit them, we're saddened because they haven't come to pass. Don't be sad. Yeah. I said, don't be sad. Yeah. Well, if I'm going through a rough time, that's okay. Because you're still on the journey to the fulfillment of what the Lord spoke. Oh, how we long to walk in all that God has for us. And you will, says the Lord. The things that are in place there by God are ordained of the Most High. There is a God anointing on those things he placed in your heart. They are designed. Are you listening to me? They are designed. I want to preach, but I can't preach. This is, this is preaching material. I thought, actually, I was kind of coming here and planning, thinking I was going to do some different things, but God's led me over here. There are things that God has placed in you that have a God anointing on them. Designed to birth and to come out and do do season. You know, there's a well, Nathan. I was going to ask Nathan what the name of it was. There's a seed that they, of, of cane or something over in, in in Asia that the seed goes into the ground and lies dormant for sixty years, and then when it starts to grow, it grows like thirty or forty feet bamboo. And how long? Like. Like weeks. 60 years it sits on the ground. But that seed is designed that the day it germinates, it goes shoo. It's not a shooting star. It's been waiting 60 years for that opportunity. Yeah. That's its genetic makeup. And the things God has spoken and placed in your heart have a genetic makeup. When all the right conditions are there. See, it might be 10 years for you or 7 years for somebody else. Whatever, 5 years, whatever it is. It was genetically designed. The Spirit spoke and showed you things to come. And a day is with a thousand years and a thousand years is a day with the Lord. And 25 years for us gets on our nerves. It's 20 years from the time God said, go, you're going to the Orient, to the time I stepped off the plane. We had, you believe this, in Bangkok, you still had to step off out on the tarmac. It was 90 degrees and muggy at 8 o'clock at night. I left home, it was like, it was, it was the winter or something. It was cold here. I got there, it was 90 degrees. I wasn't expecting that. You can always tell who comes from Florida or from the islands when you go through the airports. And who came from up north. All the northern people come in, they're all dressed up like they're going to, you know, going to Alaska. And all of a sudden, all these people going out somewhere else come up, and they're all dressed in shorts and T-shirts with a tan. I hope they're not going north because they're going to be cold when they walk out of the airport. Yeah. 20 years, and God did all kinds of things along the way. Changes and shifts and this and that, and relationships and this and that, all to bring something he said 20 years earlier to pass yeah. at the right time. So today, 
We don't let go in our, what's in our heart because there's been a period or a lull. Satan tries to come with condemnation. Tell you you're not good. God didn't speak that to you. Satan tries to come and tell you that you're not going to make it. He tries to tell you that you're no good. He tries to tell you you're too old. These young guys have got it. These young guys ain't got anything yet. So I got a zeal. I had zeal. Sometimes zeal ain't good enough where you don't have some knowledge in, behind you. And wisdom. Man, you need some wisdom because you can mess stuff up. Thank God for the zeal. But don't think you got, just because you're young and got zeal don't mean you know everything. Hello? I mean, everybody wants to get rid of the old guys. Now, you know, sidetrack. Back in the early 90s, they had this guy going around preaching, you know, the Joshua generation. They're all taking over. And it was all these 20-somethings. They're all going to take over the Summerall's and the Hagen's and the Copeland's and all those guys. They're going to just get out of the way and we're taking over. <laughs> well, if you study the Joshua generation, not real good in your Bible. Joshua took over Moses when he was 80. No, 60. 60. It was 40 years. He was, he, was, he was like, the only two that lived that were under 20 were Joshua and Caleb. Because they gave, brought back a good report. He was about 60 when he took over for Moses. It ain't some 20-something. After he was, you know, after he did what he did, he followed Moses around for 40 years. So the Joshua generation has to follow you somebody for 40 years if you're going to follow their teaching. Instead of kicking all the guys out and taking over. How did I get off on that? Somebody needed it. Somebody out there needed it. You needed that. All right. Whoever you are. Praise the Lord. That was a side journey. Now, remember where I was? Huh? No, it was a bit before Jumpy has zeal. Yeah, well, we're going, you know, God's opened up all these things. It took, it took a long time. Oh. See, we think we get something in our 20s, and it's got to happen tomorrow, and a lot of times we go out and try to make things happen. We try to promote our ministry. We try to do this. We try to do that. Instead of letting God do it. I know a lot of guys I knew back when I was younger in the Lord who was always doing all this stuff for the Lord. Talking about how great they were and all this stuff. And, and a good number of those people I know aren't in the ministry today. Because they were doing their thing, pushing it, making it happen. Burning bridges all along. Messing things up. I went and served. Buddy, buddy said, you need to go serve somebody for a good two to five years before you go into your own ministry. Brother Harris, Buddy Harris, you can't take his son along. We took him to heart. We served five years in our church. Went through some stuff. Grew. Matured a lot. Even when I got here, I still wasn't mature enough, but I, grew, I matured a lot. You should have seen me when I first got out of Rama. <laughs> I was, I, I'm like the guy on the Allstate commercial. Chaos coming to happen. I was Christian chaos. I had a chairman shirt that said CC, Christian chaos. You know? I was, because I was young, I had a lot of zeal, didn't know anything. Knew how to, I knew word, but I didn't know how to, I didn't know anything. I'm saying this, I'll say this. There are things God placed in you, and you cannot get frustrated, and you cannot get down, and you cannot start quitting just because you haven't seen them yet, and you, you've waited two years. There are things in the Bible people wait a lot longer than two years. A lot longer. Do you know there was a space of 1,500 years between Malachi and John the Baptist coming on the scene? There's one place about says this, and there was, the, the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. There have been times and seasons where God's not saying anything else, and you're just supposed to keep going the right direction that you're going in. See, somebody, they go, ah, nothing happened in two years, I'm quitting. Why would you quit after two years? Because, because I know so-and-so, and, -so and they, they were somewhere two years, and they had 4,000 people in two years. Maybe it was right. I, I, I've got a friend who pastors up outside of Cranberry Township in Pennsylvania, and John Nuzo. And uh, when he went up there to start a church, I mean, in six months, he had somewhere around 700 people. We were having, we having a church ministering after that he had started. He said, yeah, but you know what? He said, there had been like seven or eight Rhema guys come into that area and start churches and build it up to 100, 150 and quit and leave. Seven or eight times. He said, when we came, 
All those people had just been waiting for somebody to come and be stable and stay, and they all showed up. So he got that jump start base because people had already been there, but they didn't stay faithful to their call. They quit. He came, and he, he's, now they're, doing, they're, they're going and blowing. But he, he stayed faithful. And, but, you see, it was a different type of ground. He had a different type of thing going on there. He had, he had scattered harvests that they were able to gather in and bring to the things of God. Glory to God. Amen. So you can't measure things. You can't measure answers from God of how well things are going right this second. Because you might be going through the last hard place you go through before you get to the blessing that's waiting for you. I want Bible. Turn to the uh, 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Turn to the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews. How am I going to do this? It's not on the screen. Bring your Bibles. Everybody say, bring my Bible. The screen is to help people who come to church or whatever and, and, and maybe not have their Bible or um, or visiting and don't have, didn't, don't have a Bible. But we need to be bringing our Bibles. Or to put different versions up. Amen. You can't take the screen home with you and get anything. Hebrews 11, 1, 12, 1, 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about by so great cloud of witnesses as the heroes of faith, chapter 11. Let us lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. Stop. He's got a joy set before him. What is a joy to your life? The things God spoke coming to pass. Are they not a joy to your life? Are they not a, a future joy? Are they not a, a potential joy to your life? The things that God has promised and spoke to you? See, God has spoken to Jesus. The Father has spoken to the Son. And there was a joy set before him. Look what it says, though. Who for the joy that set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the, of, of the throne of God. Now, look here. He had to endure the cross, despise the shame, because there was a joy set out there. The Holy Spirit has shown you Things to come. I guarantee you, everybody in this room, the Spirit of God has spoken to you and put some kind of dream in your heart that you may have let go or let go dormant or hadn't held on to or thought it wasn't ever going to come to pass, thought it was just you, and it was the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I said glory to God. Amen. And you had to endure the, sin, the cross, the, 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 you know, the tough places. You have to despise the shame. Listen, you know how hard it was, Janie? I would go back to alumni week. <clears throat> and I see somebody I went to school with. What are you doing? I'm, I'm traveling all over the place. I'm ministering here. I, what are you doing? Uh, sweeping the floors and cleaning the toilets at our church. How many times do you get to preach a year? Two. You're up there, they're all, they're all big and glowing and blowing. And I mean, they're just hot shot. They got their credit. They, got their, they don't have credit cards. They got their, their business cards, the apostle of the most high, whatever. So, 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 so. <laughs> the right reverend apostle of the first millennium church that has been raised. I mean, to help raise Jesus from the dead. I mean, whatever. And you know, they got all kinds of titles people come up with. There's one, one person in the area that he is his excellency. His wife is the queen of high point. And I'm like, I, I just like, <laughs> come on now. There's no, there's no, no, Jesus is his excellency. Amen. There's no queens of High Point or Greensboro. Amen. I am not his excellency, the most reverend whatever. I'm a servant of the most high God. My God is his excellency. My God is the king of kings and Lord of lords. My God reserve, deserves all praise and glory. He is to be esteemed above all others. I'm a, remember, I'm a man like you. Or a woman. You know, I'm a man like the men. My wife's a woman like the woman. We're not anything special. We're just people who, obey, who are obeying God. Amen. Amen? How come I got off of that? I don't know. But there are things that the Spirit spoke. And you're just sitting there. They're sitting there. And I, this is an encouragement from the Lord this morning. The Holy Ghost has come. To stir you up. I mean, we look at you and go, well, our church should be 500 by now. I say, you know, so-and-so just down the road has got 700. This one's got 300. You're just over here with, 
you know, 50 people. But I know what God showed me. Amen. I know what God showed me. I saw it in a vision. In the spring of 1987, I saw it in a vision. I know what's happening. I know what's coming. I know it has to come to pass. Why? Because he, he, the word of the Lord endures forever. Whether it's a written word or a word spoken to you by the Spirit that lines up with his written word. That's his word. Let me give you, another, let me give you one more example. Then we're going to... That clock's dead back there. I mean, it's dead. I thought it was quarter till. Oh, thank you. There you go. It's, it, no, it's not dead. It's, it's the way the shadow was falling on it. I thought it was quarter till. I thought, I, I know I've preached longer than that. You will leave here today with a re re rejuvenated excitement about the things God showed you. Now, most of you know that we, we graduated from Kenneth Higgins Bible School, Rainbow Bible Training Center. Rainbow Bible Church is in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, on Kenosha. Same street as 71st Street. It changes names when it gets into Broken Arrow. And uh, the, where, where the Bible Church sits down it wasn't part, even part of the property when I went. It was just, it was a field over there. And, um, but back in the 30s and early 40s, that land was owned by a, farm, a, farm, a family farm. And he broke in there. When Raymond came to Broken Arrow, it was a cowpoke town. I mean, they still wore the cowboy boots and cowboy hats and drove trucks with mud all over because they, they were out rodeoing or herding, herding cattle or whatever. It was just a little cowpoke town. I mean, the streets looked like it too. They were all two lane, bumpy. I mean, it was just, a, it was, it's what it was. It was an old cowboy town. And the Indians were right down the road. So it was cowboys and Indians. Now, y'all can say that because I'm married to one, so I'm all right. Hallelujah. Not cowboy, engine. That's why I hire the tomahawks at night. All right, anyway. When they got there, so they, and they built the ministry, and the ministry has grown. They've taken on well over 180 acres. I mean, it's just, it's just started out with an office building and a warehouse is what they bought. If you go out there now, you'd just be amazed at what's, what God's done over the years, how it's expanded and how it's grown and stuff. But... um. Billy Brim got doing some research and found out about the family history and met with some of the family members. And they said, yeah, Grandpa used to go out and pray on the knoll and pray. And God began to reveal to him that God, he would use that land to reach the nations. This is, he's a farm. He died in the 70s before, they, before, before the Hagans even bought the property and after it had been sold off as commercial property and so forth. And they started doing more research and they found out that that little knoll, you got to understand, in Oklahoma, a knoll can be uh, an anthill times two. It just can be. I mean, there's you know, a lot of flat land out there. All right? There's a little knoll. He went out and prayed. He would pray for God, about the nations and about God, and God speaking to him about him using it. They went and did some research and found that that little place was right under the footprint of the church. Now, the church has an acre footprint. That's how big the church is. It's got an acre footprint. That building sits right on top. Right on top of where that man used to pray. And God would show him he's going to use that land to reach nations. There are now well over 180 Bible schools from Rainbow Bible Training Center all around the world. We're all over the world. All over the world. That man's been dead for 40 years. He never knew this. He never saw it come to pass. He never lived to experience it. I am telling you that God's word goes on even after people die. Because yes. it's the promise of God. And I'm just saying that you know this. When God speaks something, he, he expects it to come to pass. And the things he's spoken to you into your life, his expectancy is it comes to pass. He designed it to happen that way. Ooh, glory. I said, Ooh, glory. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Father, we thank you. I did not intend to go this way. I know that. You knew it. I didn't. Thank you, Father. If you love your people so much, you'll direct a service in a way that will bring life to them and encouragement to them and restore hope in the things you spoke to them 
so that they can walk by faith and not by sight and see it through. Yet, Father, we're here in a, in a morning service with people. We don't know all that's going on in their life. So for adventure, there'll be those among us that do not know you, that have not come to the knowledge of the saving grace we find in Jesus and Jesus alone. Father, woo their hearts by your Spirit. Draw them and bid them come. We lift up and magnify Jesus as the King of kings and Lord of lords. And those be among us that are not filled with the Spirit, Father, show them the blessing that you intend for them, that they receive your precious Holy Spirit in his fullness. As everyone please remains in an attitude of prayer, if you'll bow your heads and have your eyes closed, please, just for this moment, a solemn moment. If you're here today, and you are not born again. I'm not asking you, have you ever joined the Sunday school, joined the church, been water baptized? You've never in your life had a personal relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. And you want that. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you today. Anybody here? In that same vein, if you're here today and you're backslid, exactly what the Bible means by that, you've gone backwards. You're back, so God said he'll heal your backsliding. If you're here today and you're backslid, you're not walking with God like you should, should be, you know you're not, would you raise your hand? I don't mean backslid, I don't mean you, you missed church last week. I'm talking about you've gone back to doing the way you were living before and you're not, you're not happy about it. And our next offer is if you're here today and you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. And I mean by that, you know, we all get born again. You had the witness of the Spirit, but then the Bible teaches another experience beyond that. We call it the baptism or the infilling of the Holy Spirit. If you're here today, you're not filled with the Spirit and want to be all, all lay hands on you, you'll get filled. Just be speaking in, all, in, in heavenly languages. Praise God. As His Holy Spirit gives you utterance. Anybody? All right. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or Using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.